Hello everyone, you're listening to Cloud Next, your go-to source for cloud innovation and leaders in sight, brought to you by Global Dots. If you ever worked in cybersecurity, you know it's not glamorous. It's patching systems, fighting technical debt and constantly chasing scale. But somehow, Nir Rothenberg makes it sound like stand-up comedy. In this episode, we sat down with Nir, CISO at Rapid, who shared his journey from chemistry to cyber. Lessons from leading security at NSO and why he believes the future isn't about chasing the latest buzzwords, but just doing the basics really well. I'm Ganesh, the awesome solutions architect at Global Dots, where we research innovations every day so you don't have to. As always, we invite you to join the conversation on LinkedIn. We recorded this episode live in our Cloud Hub, our first ever exclusive customer event. Nia, before we dive in, tell us a bit about yourself. You've had quite a unique journey from chemistry to cybersecurity. What led you to make that career switch? The money. It's all about the money. Who said that? Some rapper. It's a great song. Uh, so it's all about... The, it's where's, all, the, where's the money, Lebowski? <laughs> no, not that one. Uh, it's, it's all about yeah. the money. Uh, so... Uh, Dollar dollar video. So uh, so it's all about the money, and uh, and you know cyber is blowing up. So uh, anybody listening, if you want to make some money, I'm hiring. I don't pay well, but the next guy will pay well. So you know I'll teach you. So join join my team. Uh, so so yeah, it, you know it just it just happened. I had when I started uh, there wasn't cyber. I remember I still remember I tell the story a lot. Uh, I was in the Bank of Israel doing an IT assurance project. And then my boss came to me. He's like, hey, you know, you're actually doing a cyber project. I'm like, what's a cyborg? Like, what what are we like bionic people? He's like, no, cyber. He's like, what is that? He's like, it's it's this new thing that it's a cyber thing. And uh and then my salary just went up by 30% automatically. And since then, you, you know, I don't look back. So uh so 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 it's amazing. Uh and, and the reality is about cyber is it's a facet of quality. So if you're a company that really focuses on having quality, you're going to have really good cyber, uh, probably, because you care about quality. So, you know, everybody's talking about Netflix, right? That's the example of like a company with great security. Netflix has great quality, except the, the Tyson fight, which uh, apparently really sucked, except that one time, uh, it, it works really, really well. You know, or Google is another great example of a company that, at, you know, figured out scale, invented half the open source we use and has amazing security. So, you, you know, don't tell anybody, but, you know, it's just a facet of quality. Uh, and and coming up as it's joining, I just, you know, uh, you know, stayed curious, went between the drops and ultimately found, uh, uh, found success in cyber and uh, giving value to companies there. Well, it uh, maybe wasn't quite the uh, emotional... Uh, heartwarming story that we might have expected, but it was deadly honest that you went for the money. And I can't, I can't yeah. say that I'm not yeah. in the industry for the exact same reason. You know, I would be a, a I, I, there's a quote I love. I don't know who said it. They said it's called work. It's not called super happy fun. Yeah. Time. It's called work, right? We're supposed to work and we get paid for, for, you know, and I think people forget, you know, sometimes uh, people on the team, they're like, like, I'm not motivated. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. Did the paycheck that like, went into your bank account? Like, <laughs> like, am I, am I missing something here? Like, you, you know, and, and by the way, that's another facet of cyber. It's like a giant pile of shit that you got to shovel sometimes. You know, you got to clean a bathroom. That's what it is. Some, sometimes patching is not fun, but you got to do it yeah. anyway. You know what I mean? And and I, I think that the companies that, get, that find success, if any uh, founder is listening to this and they want to start a cool company, take the pile of shit and make it smell a little better. And people are going to buy it. You know what I mean? So if you look like I, I'm, I'm here, I'm talking to you from the Global Dots uh, conference, uh, uh, Cloud Hub, and I look at the companies here and the successful companies are companies that took something really hard and made it a little easier for the practitioners mm -hmm. to do. And, and, and you know, and, and that's another important thing uh, that people tend to forget behind the buzzwords and the risks and the vulnerabilities. You know, it's just a lot of heavy lifting. And and, and again, th that's if you're willing to do that as a professional in cyber, you're going to do really well for yourself because the company's going to see your value. And you're just going to deliver value constantly. You're just going to make sure they're patched, make sure their file wall is, uh, it, it, it is configured correctly, make sure they got a WAF, partner with, with cool companies like Global Dots, by the way, which is a partner of Rapids. And, you know, if you 
do the right steps, the company is well configured, you get value. It's uh, it's very true what you say. Um, uh, I want to come back to you. Um, you spent some time at the NSO. Yeah. Can you give us a bit of a breakdown on how that shaped your perspective on cybersecurity and, and what lessons did you get from it that you could share for others? Yeah. So, yeah, I, I led security at NSO for three years. Uh, for those of you who don't know, NSO uh, hacks uh, cell phones uh, and sells it to governments. Uh, they do a lot of good. Mm -hmm. They do a lot of good. I'll just say that right now. Uh, I know I sound like Trump. It's a good thing. It's a great thing. But no, they really do a lot of good. Basically, most of NSO's activities stopping uh, cyber uh, crime and, uh, and terrorism for Western countries. 99% uh, of the customers are legit Western countries that want to stop terrorism and, and, and crime. And, and they did a lot of good. And you don't hear about that because it's uh, intelligence operations. Like, you know, James Bond, you know, you can't really go meet him in real life, right? You can't see his cool tech. And NSO gets tech for people like James Bond. So that's literally working in that company uh, was really interesting because you work with some of the smartest people uh, I've ever met. Uh, people who can hack iPhones. What I learned is that anything can be hacked. Literally anything. If you put enough smart people, enough time on a problem, they're going to solve it. And it's just amazing to see. Uh, and I learned to focus. I think that's the number one rule you learn when you work there with smart people who can hack anything. It's like then you become a CISO of a regular company or, or, or a company that's not selling cyber weapons to governments. It's like, okay, what should we focus on? Should we focus on this arbitrary, stupid, zero day that, that doesn't involve us? Or should we just do the fundamentals? Just keep shoveling the ship, right? Uh, and, and and the answer is fundamentals. Focus on the fundamentals, because this kind of exotic stuff they're probably not going to get you. And again, you you can't cover all bases, but if you build a program that's fundamentally sound, you're you're going to be you're going to be in a good place. Mm -hmm. So that's number one lesson. So that that leads quite nicely to talking about your team. So you know you you just talked about keeping people focused, keeping the eye on the ball. Uh, building teams and security teams today have like an overwhelming amount of data points to look after and attack vectors and all these other things, and they need to stay fast and efficient. You're a CISO of a global t fintech company. What are some of the biggest challenges that you face when dealing with all of that noise and keeping your operations cost effective? First off, it's really hard to uh, to do cyber today. There's a data, data explosion. There's an infrastructure explosion. When I started off in Rapid, I used to say, I used to love saying that. I'm like, if you're multi-cloud, then you're a sucker. And today I understand that I'm just, I was fucking naive. <laughs> I was just naive because if you're a small company, you got AWS, you're like, hey, look at these guys. Like, no, you just have a small company. If you're a global company and you bought some companies and you got a global presence and you're multi-cloud and you got on-prem and you got everything and you just secure it and can properly configure it all, and that's really, really hard to do. And then you get breaches and you get problems, which is, by the way, going back to the money, not a bad thing, is it? Like, as long as I don't get breached, the fact that there's breaches in cyber, it's, it's you know, it's, it, it's, it's an unpleasant truth to say. But, you know, if your career is in cyber and there's a lot of cyber stuff happening, then that's not a bad thing for you. Imagine there wasn't. Imagine nobody get hacked anymore. Like, I get fired on the spot. Look at all these dumb jokes I make. I'd probably be the first one to go. So, uh, so, so. It, it, you know, it's hard to do, first off. And the way to do it, you, you got to you gotta do a number of things. First off, you got to partner with right people because it's about vendors. And, and, and yeah, I'm, I'm in the Global Dots conference. So obviously, I got to say, work with companies like Global Dots. You know, uh, we work with them, for instance, in the WAF. Uh, you know, it, it was a game changer. You get a lot of knowledge that it's hard to retain and build internally. And then you, and then you can learn from that knowledge and and uh, and bring up the people who work for you. So I would say the, the key is, and this is something I strive to, good partnerships, bring in some A players, some really good experienced people, and then bring in a lot of less experienced people that are very hungry to learn and work hard that will learn from, you know, the partners and the A players and become A players in the future. And I'm a proud stepping stone. Like I got people who worked for me who became CISOs, who became uh, security managers, IT managers, uh, CIOs, whatever. I'm happy that I gave them two, three, five years of their career and I was their stepping stone and they leveled up with me. They did a lot of impact and moved on. I like it. You know, this is a marriage. This is an open relationship. You know, like we're working when it's good. When it's not, move on. As long as we're working, you know, that's what's important. So if uh, I'm in Rapid for a few years already, when I was able to mix it up with the seniors, juniors, and the good partners, 
we were killing it. We were just delivering like crazy. We did a lot of cool, innovative stuff. And when I didn't know how to do that, maybe I, I packed too much A players and not enough uh, juniors who were hungry, or maybe I didn't get the right partner in the right time. Then, then you know, they started internal politics and fighting and all that stuff, and then work slowed down. And, and thankfully, we didn't really get impacted operationally because a lot of times I've been in companies that, that led to a breach or to an operational incident. So thankfully, it hadn't led to that, but it's not good, you know. So I think that's a secret. That's what I always strive for. And that's why I advise anybody listening to find the right mix for them. Partners, seniors and juniors, mix it up and get uh, and get to the work going. Mm. That, that is great advice. And I highly advocate taking on juniors that don't appear to have the right credentials for it. Because some of the most successful people I've had in my teams in the past have been people that were sort of unhirable by other people, but they just showed so much dedication and so much like love for the topic and, and keen to learn that they then, like you say, used me as a stepping stone and went on to be way, way more intelligent than me. A hundred percent. I got to say that one of the best cyber professionals I've ever met was a chemist who thought he was a stand-up comedian and he's amazing. So, you know, <laughs> you, you can argue that guy's unhirable and you can't even interview him for a podcast, but... Uh, uh, you should edit that out. But is it, <laughs> that's one of those uh, dumb jokes that you I, I, edit out. I, 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 hear that, <laughs> I hear that he's a total legend, so don't worry about it. And uh, I, on the note of uh, the, the bad guys, you know, we always have to salute those people because they've kept us in business for, you know, 30 years and they will continue to keep us in business. So big shout out to all the bad guys out there who, who make our lives possible. Yeah, just don't hack um, us. We, we love yeah, you yeah. far away. We like yeah, looking yeah, at you we, far away. Just ask somebody else. But but yeah, yeah keep doing what yeah, you do. We, we keep doing what you're doing somewhere else. Yes, absolutely. Um, so you're a CISO. You're at the front line of this. We have a, a new world coming with uh, AI advancements and new regulations coming in and, and old regulations going out. This would seem on a yearly basis. Uh, where do you see the market heading? in the next five years in both terms of sort of attack and defense? You know, the sad truth is that the market is very, very slow. You know, because, uh, you know, sometimes you see like, oh, the new zero trust, super duper AI based thing. And ultimately, all the companies still have uh, VPNs, right? They don't even do zero trust. They have a problem implementing MFA. And that's why ra ransomware is so prevalent. It's so hard to deal with uh, technical debt. So the truth is where I see the market. And by the way, I, I think I, I, I read somewhere from uh, the Zscaler's last earning calls that they say their biggest competitor is adoption. It's not even like somebody else. It's just like not enough people are buying the, their tech. So I'm saying we, we as early adopters, as people who, you know, who, who as, as tech nerds, we love to think like, oh, what's the next big move? And it's not how the world really works. There's a lot of technical debt. And I think AI could be the, the solution to that. You know, it could really be the solution to that because there's just never enough working hands. So I think what I'm excited most about the future is is getting more, all this agentic approach is just getting more help, do, uh, you know, doing the, the basics and getting rid of technical debt and then moving forward to the next thing. Mm -hmm. uh, again, it's like, it's like the invention of the washing machine. You know, it's like finally... I can get, I can wash all my dirty clothes and I don't have to, you know, go to the stream and kind of uh, clean it on a rock. So I think that will be the biggest change that we can finally get to baseline. Get to baseline. I think that if you look four or five years from the future, you'll see more companies at baseline, which sounds funny, right? Like have a WAF, have like a zero trust access solution, you know, have good monitoring. That's like, yeah, but we were talking about it for 15 years. Nobody can implement it. It's too hard. It's too hard. But now, finally, you have like a super brain that can do it. I think another byproduct will be that the market will, will be a, a full of much more laser people. Like, uh, just you don't have to work hard and because you got, you know, 17 PhDs in your pocket. And then you got the level, the technical level is going down. And it's a great opportunity for anybody who likes to work hard. It doesn't matter if you're, uh, you know, a chemist with dad jokes or, or like, you know, or whatever, an artist, or, or maybe, you know, you study computer science. If you're willing to do the work and not just rely on AI, you're going to have a lot of value uh, in, in the market moving forward. So I think this is a great, there's great opportunities here. That's what I see. I don't see anything game changer. I don't see any new, like, uh, network protocol being invented or anything like that. Like, networks have stayed the same for, you know, yeah, decades, 
And they'll probably stay the same, uh, especially with AI. Maybe the quantum computing revolution will change that, but networks for the near future are probably going to stay mm. exactly the same. I, I resonate highly with that conversation because working for a company that, that is highly innovative, we get technologies like six years in advance, but then they're not ready in Europe. So it's things that will sell in Israel and, and be getting highly adopted forget about it in Germany and the UK, you know, it's, it's just like moving the needle is super, super slow. So, uh, I resonate with that. Yeah. hundred percent. It's always eye opening when you go to conferences, you meet CISOs, like big American corporation. And you're like, Oh, so which, uh, EDR do you use? And he's like, Oh, we're still on antivirus. And it's like, what is that? It's like, you know, or stuff like that, or like the, the, the basic. And again, if you look at the innovative companies, like they're innovative 10 years ago and they're talking about, we need more adoption. It's not like, you know, the, the competitor is killing us. It's like the whole market is just scratching the surface. And, 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 and that's, a, that's a reality, you know. And uh, if we go back to attackers, that's why, you know, the metaphor for cyber I love is, is that joke of, you know, two people crash in the jungle. The tiger starts chasing them and one of them like puts on his running shoes. And his friend's like, you're never going to outrun a tiger. He's like, I don't need to outrun a tiger. I need to outrun you. Yeah, right. You know, so, that, 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 so that's what we're seeing in cyber a lot. Like why invest so heavily in like hacking a company that has good fundamentals in, in the more advanced controls where you got so many companies that have open ports, no controls at all. Yeah. Just, you know, it's free range. Right? Mm, makes, makes perfect sense. Um, last question. We always like to ask everybody who comes on the podcast is the DeLorean question, which is if you could go back in time and give yourself one piece of professional advice, what would that be? What I would say to myself is uh, take more risks. You know, when early on in your career, you feel kind of inadequate. Uh, you know, a lot of people, especially me going to chemistry, I had imposter syndrome. I'm like, oh my God, they're going to discover me. I'm just a clown. You know, I'm just a, a clown. You, you know, and, and it's something that, that took me years to get over. Uh, I still know my place, right? Working with these is geniuses, you I always remember, like, you know, we're not as smart as them. But I think the number one advice is take more risks. Like, you know, go to management. Tell them what you think. Tell them how you can accomplish them. Give them value. And don't be, don't be frustrated sitting in my, your chair like, oh, this is so stupid. And, and, you know, this is a lot of juniors having companies, especially junior engineers or junior security practitioners. Like, this is so dumb. This is going to get hacked. This is bad. And yet you don't come with a serious proposal how to deal with it. You just stay with the frustration. And, and you're, you're basically, you're fearful. You don't want to be, be turned down. You don't want to, you, you know, you're, that, that's what it is. It's fear. So, so, uh, you know, in, instead of looking at some guy who doesn't have fear and feeling jealousy or feeling like, you know, oh, my boss is an idiot. Why don't you write a good proposal and go over to him and, and, and try to push it? So I think that's the biggest regret stuff I haven't done. You know, there's times I haven't been with a serious proposal, but it's just stayed with my, uh, you know, kind of my frustrations. Uh, and, and that's something I really try to focus on if I have a good idea. Uh, you know, just like I said, you get a good partner, you get a junior and a senior, and you can just implement it. That's amazing. We're believing. If you don't know what to do, ask the 17 PhDs in your pocket. They'll help you out. So that's the amazing world we live in. But, but even like 10, 12 years ago, you could already have been there. You could have already done that if you just open and think about that. So and again, it's hard. It's easy to say now, but, and it's really hard uh, to think about that when you're just starting. That's, that's mm -hmm. what I would do. Not often you hear a CISO say, take more risks. So I like that. Um, Nia, you, you've been a total pleasure. Uh, really thank you for your time today. Uh, any closing word for us? Yeah, I really advise you guys to give alcohol to your guests. Like, there's, there's an open bar here, you know? I'm like, I'm very boring usually, actually. I'm like very boring and, uh, and inhibited. Uh, and again, thank you, guys. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I really enjoyed it. I, I, this is a few episodes. Hopefully, you'll get this podcast out there because uh, you're getting good people asking good questions and uh, it's short form. So, you know, it's exactly the, the ride home or whatever. And, uh, you know, it, it's good. The more of this, the better. So thanks for having me. Thank you so much. Total pleasure, Nir. This episode was produced and edited by Daniel Ohana and Tom Morvidson. Sound editing and mixed by Bren Russell. I'm Ganesh the Awesome. And if you're ready to deep dive and start transforming the way you approach cloud practices and cybersecurity strategies, then the team and myself at Global Dots are at your disposal. We are cloud innovation hunters and we search the globe looking for the future tech solutions so we can bring them to you. We've been doing it for over 20 years. It's what we do. And if I don't say so myself, we do it pretty well. So have a word with the experts, don't be shy, and remember that conversations are always for free.